Heel. That's what uh, the APSA logo looks like. It looks like an on button of some kind has been some of the criticism on social media, but perhaps that's a little unkind. It keeps uh, the red color. And uh, earlier we spoke to the CEO of the APSA group, Maria Ramos. The, the, the confusion, I suppose, but it's much more than that. This for us means new beginnings. It means the fact that we have now fully made the transition to being a standalone, proudly African bank, effectively. And uh, in March this year, we went to market with a new strategy, and that strategy was about growth. This is the next part of the separation from Barclays. We have a new brand. It's a brand that embodies the aspirations that we have as an organization. It's about a, a new culture. It's about a work we've been doing as an organization with 42,000 colleagues. We've said to ourselves, this is about being brave. It's about being passionate. It's about being ready. And these are not just words. I mean, we've had 32,000 odd colleagues on a journey together defining what that means and, and committing to that. It's about delivering on the strategy that we crafted together in the course of last year and took to our board and got it signed off. We're very mindful that we have to develop that strategy to all our stakeholders, to our shareholders, to our customers and to our clients across the length and the breadth of our businesses across 10 countries on this continent. And so the brand for us embodies all of this. It's about being proudly African, which is deep in our heritage and uh, and deep into our future. And so it is very emotional. It's emotional for me, but so it's Maria, emotional for all of us. So Maria, as part of the strategy, I see that APSA is really moving towards having a strong digital presence. Um, in so doing, how do you ensure that you remain a people's bank, a personable bank, and at the same time, guarding against, mitigating against, you know, cyber infiltration, those kinds of things? You know, we have said that, you know, for us, digital and being a scalable, uh, digitally scalable business uh, is about meeting the ambitions of our customers and clients. You know, people make choices about wanting to do things better and wanting to do things faster, wanting to do them where they want to do them and having that capability. And we want to walk that path with, with customers and with colleagues. And uh, so, you know, technology and, and digitizing isn't, isn't something that happens somewhere else. It's, it's an expression of, of the times and of, what, of who we are and who our customers are. So it's, you know, we want to, we want to go there with customers and with clients. And, uh, and it's about, you know, digitizing is also about people. So we don't want to go and do something that's, uh, that is, is not for our customers and it's not to enable our customers uh, and it's not to enable the economies that we serve and, and work in and live in every single day and to enable our colleagues. So we don't see these things as as polar opposites of each other. We say, see these things as enabling of each other. So for us, technology is an enablement. Digitization is an enablement. It goes hand in hand in being a people-centered organization and being a client-centered organization. It's not that we go and pluck a technology and then think about the people. We're thinking about the people and then saying, what is the digital enablement that will make this better for, for the community that we're living and working in? And so that's, that's fundamentally important for us. And, uh, and I think that's the difference as well. It's not about the technology, it's about the people. And it's about then the technology that enables people to achieve their purpose. And so when we say that, that you know, that is our purpose, uh, that is what it's, it is about. Now you